We have a division right here. And we're going to play a game of... Do you know what's wrong with the template? Do you know what's wrong with the template? The answer is the organization on this division is too low. Organization is how long you fight for or defend for before the division breaks and has to run away or stop its attack. With a division less than 30, you're going to find yourself not fighting very long. So therefore, this division will end its attack or will break on the defensive. Ideally, in a perfect world, you want at least 40 organization. Unfortunately, anything less than 30 organization, you are going to be in a bit of a pickle. Even if this division does lock some lots of damage because it has really high soft attack or breakthrough you're going to find yourself in a situation if you're trying to break a difficult terrain like over a big river into a hill into a mountain because those are quite difficult terrains to break without high organization you're not going to be fighting long enough to actually break the opponent so for an attacking division like a tank division tends to be this organization is too low so how do you make organization go higher you add more infantry in this case mobile infantry the options you've got are cavalry or motorized and there you go, 32 organization. But that's not ideal. In a perfect world, you'd probably like to have more org than that. You'd probably like to have 40. Well, you go for your doctrines. Mobile warfare is a great example of that. All of the doctrines tend to give some organization at some point, but mobile warfare gives the most. So we'll get a few doctrines. And then if we look at that division again, you can see now it has 45 organization. By the way, there's two kinds of battalions. There are infantry, in this case, mobile infantry, aka cavalry and motorized. And then there are tanks. Tanks will remove organization from the division where infantry will add organization to the division so it's always a balancing act remember the reason you add tanks onto for two reasons you want the armor and you want the breakthrough those are the two main stats for tanks what else is wrong with this division yeah the armor is atrocious at the very start of the game you need at least 10 armor to be worthwhile from 1936 to 1939 after that you want to be going to 15 and 20 armor on a division otherwise this arm this tank will get pierced and therefore it will not take advantage of one of the best stats for tanks aka armor all right, guys, we have a new division. Let's play the game. This division doesn't have any anti-air. It has no anti-air. This division is really good, by the way. This is a good division. It's got fantastic organization, good soft attack, good breakthrough, really, really good armor. It's got good speed as well. It's got logistics, which a larger division, larger than 30 combat worth, would have. This division is good. The only downside, it has no anti-air. If your opponent is spamming lots of cast to deny you breakthrough, it will absolutely shred this division. This division needs anti-air. The easier two ways to add enough anti-air on a motorized anti-air and then in this case we'll replace the artillery with support anti-air and there you go 30 anti-air on this division gives it loads and loads of anti-air if you get a bit above 50 anti-air you've been in a situation where the ai will stop putting up their planes because it feels like it'll lose too many casts if it tries to bomb this tank division if your first answer was no anti-air congratulations you passed if your second answer was it doesn't have a flame tank I'll accept that as well. Flame tanks give super big bonuses to a tracking terrain. And because this is an attack-based division, an armored attack division, a flame tank would have gone a really long way with this division. Okay, this one, I have to give you a caveat. This division is built for uh, frontline, not for offensive spearheads. What's wrong with the division? <laughs> If your first answer was, the division is too big, the answer is correct. When you're making a division to fill out a front line, you don't want to be making that division too big. That division will be unbelievably expensive and it will only serve the purpose of holding the front line and entrenching. So having a division that's as big as this, just for the sole purpose of defending the front line, is not worth it. And as a side note, this division has very high supply usage. So what happens is when you want to make use a tank or an infantry division that's built for attacking, those divisions tend to be very high in supply to begin with and this will be eating all the supply of the front line so your actual attacking divisions won't do much damage because these are soaking up all of the supplies if this was an attacking division it would actually be okay it might be better off to have a little bit of armor on it but this division has quite a lot of soft attack a decent amount of breakthrough for infantry so for the most part this would actually work one of the number one issues with players in hot 4 is they make one division for your entire army you can't play with one division for everything you need one division for the front line one division for attacking and then also maybe another division for maybe garrisons all right this is the next division <laughs>
If your first answer was, this division is too large. Correct. This division is over 45 combat width. Now that combat width has changed, there are certain combat widths which are insanely less effective. An example of that is a division template that's smaller than 10 and a division that's larger than 45. 45 is the maximum. If your second answer was, it has no AA, it's a good answer too. If you said that this division also lacks armor, I'll support that one too. If you also said this division also lacks piercing, yeah, that's a good answer as well. Also, if you said that there's too many artillery battalions on this division, yeah, that's right. You never really want to go more than four. What's wrong with the division? Tell me what's wrong with this division. If your answer was, the combat width is too small, you are wrong. 10 width is doable. If you said the organization is too low, wrong. That org is great. It's above 40. That's totally okay. If you said this has too many support companies, correct. You got it. Support brigades don't scale based on the size of the division. So if this was a 50 width or a 2 width, the cost for a support anti-air would still be 24 pieces of anti-air equipment. So the smaller you make the division, less cost effective it is. This division will burn through equipment. When it takes losses, and because you have lots of this division, it will cost a lot for all the support equipment simultaneously of all the divisions you'll have with them because you'll have lots of this division because it's only 10 width. So if you have like a, an army with 24 of these divisions, when you get into battle, you will bleed all this support equipment. The only support that I will maybe justify will be like a single piece of artillery just to give it that extra bit of soft attack so it has fighting capabilities. Or if you wanted to give it a little bit of anti-air, I would support one anti-air battalion as well, but nothing else. Tell me what's wrong with the tank division. If your first answer was the reliability is too low, yeah, it's a little low. It all depends on how many of these tanks are in your division. If, for instance, one battalion of a heavy tank, in that case, 80% reliability, you could probably get away with that. If you have like half the division with mobile infantry and the other half with heavy tanks, you probably want 95 to 100% reliability. The biggest problem with this tank, guys, it's just too expensive. <laughs> it's way too expensive. 35 production cost to produce one of these? If you can't fill out these tanks in your division, the awesome stats that this tank gives will not apply to that division. Having a division at 80% strength because it's missing 100 heavy tanks is just not viable. You can make the best tank in the world, but if it doesn't make it into the division because you can't produce enough, it's just not worth it. With a heavy tank, you don't want to go over 20 production cost. And there you go, 99 reliability, 4 armor, 5 engine, and this has still has 53 armor and 44 breakthrough, but the production cost now has been reduced to 17. Tell me what's wrong with this tank. If your answer was low soft attack, wrong. Remember, Remember, we make tanks for armor and breakthrough. Soft attack is a secondary to that. If you want to add soft attack to a division, you add artillery onto it. So no, soft attack is not the right answer. You're wrong. If you said reliability, ding, 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 you're right. This has no reliability. This division, when moving around the country, will constantly break down over and over and over and over again. And you will bleed this tank when uh, making pushes on the front line. Remember, reliability doesn't apply when in combat. It's only out of combat. So the second problem with this tank is it has low hardness. Hardness is one of the other important stats for tanks because it will negate any soft attack damage. If you said that the cost of this was too high, now nah, the cost's all right. What's wrong with this medium tank? If you said fuel usage, wrong. If you said the armor is not high enough, you were wrong. If you said the reliability is too high, ding, 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 ding. If the division has over 100 reliability, you don't benefit in any way, shape, and form. The maximum amount of reliability is 100. So there's absolutely no point of going over a hundred. What's wrong with this division? If you said the supply, yeah, I could argue that this could do with logistics because this is a very big division. If you said that the combat width was too big, nah, 43 combat width is legit. Anything less than 45 is totally fine or 45. If anyone says issues with hardness, nah, this is decent hardness. 50% hardness in, in 1936, nah, this is totally fine. If anyone said armor, 34 armor, 1936 technology, nah, that's totally fine. Now, if you said mixing medium tanks and SPGs, you've got it. The truth is, guys, if you make a medium tank that has decent breakthrough, like at least 500 breakthrough, you don't need SPGs. This division will break the front line, make overruns, and make encirclements. You don't need to add SPGs on for extra soft attack. SPGs feel a little bit redundant of what they do because they add soft attack to a division. But the truth is, is, once you've got over like a threshold of breakthrough and they can't pierce your tank, SPGs aren't required. You don't need them. So in this instance, this mix between mediums and SPGs is kind of redundant. 
redundant and you don't need to be making two kinds of equipment. If you focus your production just on mediums and then just made more and more and more mediums, this division would do its job of making breakthroughs and that division would equally be as good. The only time I've found that SPGs are worth it are when you're playing as Germany and you're trying to break the lowlands and you've got a mixture of SPG lights and regular lights to break through. In that case, that good combination of breakthrough and soft attack tends to be pretty good. But once you get an above 500 breakthrough on a tank division, soft attack for the most part doesn't matter. If there's any other mistakes you are making with your divisions, feel free to jump on my Discord and submit them to division template chat. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like Hoi4. I know you do. I know you. That's why you're watching this. <laughs> you think this video was good? Well, this one is the final form. Click it.